back to another video. My name is Storm and I have a C45 incomplete spinal cord injury. As someone who's been dealing with his life after a spinal cord injury for the past seven years, after doing hours of research on spinal cord injury, the complexities following such a life-changing injury, I'm excited to share this new information with you that hopefully you can use to improve your life going forward. This information should add value to your life, especially if you have a spinal cord injury, because I'm going to be going over some new research data collected in the field of neuroscience, health, and recovery. I'll be discussing problems regarding risk factors and increasing mortality and death after spinal cord injury and providing some solutions on how to improve longevity and life expectancy outcomes after spinal cord injury. All of the studies from today's video are going to be in the description down below, so be sure to check that out. And as always, please watch the full video to get the most value out of today's video. Please like and share if you find this information helpful or interesting so that others will be recommended it as well and so I can see that you like this sort of content. With that said, thank you for joining me and let's get right into it. Baby, it's really whatever. Stormy no matter the weather. Subscribe so to Stormy and Friends. A spinal cord injury refers to damage to the spinal cord and up to 90% of cases are due to traumatic causes like car crashes, sports collisions, and diving accidents from disease or degeneration like cancer. Symptoms of spinal cord injury depend on the severity of the injury and its location on the spinal cord. Symptoms may include partial or complete loss of sensory function or motor control in the body and most severe spinal cord injuries affect the systems that control bladder and bowel control, breathing, heart rate, and blood pressure. Every year around the world between 250 and 500,000 people suffer a spinal cord injury and the annual global incidence rate is 40 to 80 cases per million population. Most people with spinal cord injuries experience chronic pain and are two to five times more likely to die prematurely than people without a spinal cord injury. Mortality rate is highest in the first year after injury and remains high compared to the general population with mortality rate increasing with injury level severity and is substantially higher with those with complete Asia A injuries compared to those with incomplete Asia B or C injuries. Age at time of injury is also important as mortality increases with higher age. Males are most at risk in young adulthood ages 20 to 29 years old and older age 70 plus years old. Females are most at risk in adolescence ages 16 to 19 years old and older age 60 plus years old with male to female ratios being two to one among adults, sometimes even higher. Preventable secondary conditions like infections from pressure ulcers, muscle spasms, osteoporosis, blood clots or deep vein thrombosis, and urinary tract infections are no longer among the leading causes of death among people with spinal cord injury in high income countries, but these conditions remain the main causes of death of people with spinal cord injury in low income countries. While urinary tract infection complications and renal failure were the leading causes of death and suffering in the spinal cord injury community in the 1950s, more recent studies have showed pneumonia and other respiratory complications as the most common causes when observing outpatient visits for acute respiratory illness after suffering a spinal cord injury. Highlighting the significant impact of respiratory illnesses in the issue of journal covering association with chest and acute respiratory illness and mortality in chronic spinal cord injury. Of 8,700 outpatient visits, roughly 31% required hospitalization and a 60-day mortality rate was 7.9% for pneumonia and 2.9% overall. Heart disease and cancer have also been increasing as common causes of death after suffering a spinal cord injury. Spinal cord injury mortality risk increases and survival rate lowers in low income and middle income countries. Spinal cord injury is associated with lower rate of school enrollment, economic participation, and carries substantial individual and societal costs. Misconceptions, negative attitudes, and physical barriers result in the exclusion from full participation in society of many people with spinal cord injuries. Children with spinal cord injury are less likely than others to start school and advance in school 
and adults with spinal cord injury face similar barriers to economic participation, with a global unemployment rate of more than 60%. 20 to 30% of people with spinal cord injuries show clinical signs of depression, which has negative impacts on improvements in function and overall health. Individuals with spinal cord injuries are at higher risk of attempting suicide compared to the general population. Studies report that 7% of individuals with spinal cord injuries acquired their injury as a result of attempted suicide. Suicide after spinal cord injury was reported as a cause of death between 6 and 11% of the time. The history of mental illness, substance abuse, traumatic experiences, previous suicide attempts, and easy access to such means, excessive threat perceptions, limited social support, family fragmentation, sleep disturbance, and poor access to psychological support in the community are all among the highest risk factors in increasing clinical depression and suicidal behavior post spinal cord injury. When looking to improve longevity outcomes, care, and overcoming barriers for those with spinal cord injuries, knowing that the leading causes of spinal cord injury are car crashes, falls, violence and self-harm, or sports-related injuries, effective interventions are being conducted to prevent several of the main causes of spinal cord injury, including improvements in roads and vehicles and people's behaviors on roads to avoid car crashes, guards and barriers to prevent falls, policies to negate harmful use of drugs and alcohol, and access to firearms to reduce violence and education of safer sports practice. Essential measures to secure the right of education and economic participation for those living with spinal cord injury include legislation, policy, and programs which promote physically accessible homes, schools, workplaces, hospitals, and transportation. Inclusive education and educational settings of correct understanding of spinal cord injury and disability and positive attitudes towards people living with it. Vocational rehabilitation and elimination of discrimination in employment settings to optimize social support and the chance of employment with microfinance education and other forms of employment benefits to support economic self-sufficiency that do not act as a disincentive to return to work. And the promotion of protective factors such as acceptance and hope, a sense of control, personal resilience, quality social support and engagement in social participation, relational commitments, purpose in life and the ability to perceive injury as a challenge rather than a threat, and access to responsive support systems to decrease the risk of mental illness and suicide in individuals with spinal cord injury. Implementation of the UN Convention and the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, or CRPD, requires action to address gaps and barriers for life after a spinal cord injury. Essential measures being made for improving the survival, health, and participation of people with spinal cord injury include timely and appropriate pre-hospital management, including quick recognition of suspected spinal cord injury and availability of timely, quality medical care and time and method of transfer to hospital with rapid evaluation and initiation of injury management, including immobilization of the spine. Acute care, including surgery appropriate to the type and severity of injury, degree of instability and presence of neural compression in the accordance with the wishes of the patient and their family. Access to ongoing health care, health education and products like medications, wheelchairs, catheters and splints to reduce risk of secondary complications like pressure sores and loss of bladder and bowel function to improve quality of life and enable people to perform everyday activities they would not otherwise be able to do, which reduces functional limitations and dependency. Only 5 to 15 percent of people in low and middle income countries have access to assistive devices that they need and access to specialized knowledge among providers of medical care and skilled rehab and mental health services which offer effective physical, psychological, and psychiatric assessment and intervention for those with mental health issues to reduce the risk of suicidal behavior and maximize function, independence, overall well-being, and community integration. Over time, in comparison to 50 years ago, there has been improvements in survival rates and life expectancy for those living with spinal cord injuries. Most notably in paraplegics, 
However, mortality rates remain elevated in higher level, more severely injured quadriplegics. Future improvements in longevity will require a greater understanding of the way in which personal and environmental factors interact with age and injury. Lifestyle factors such as pre-morbid education, health and risk-taking behaviors, depression, exercise, pre-existing conditions or comorbidities, including traumatic brain injury, drug and alcohol use and smoking, as well as psychosocial variables such as living circumstances, finances, and employment, and access to care and social support are important risk factors to be considered and managed when understanding or working with people who have a spinal cord injury. This information would enable more clear interpretation and understanding to an individual taking into account risk factor profiles, lifetime care planning, future service development and prevention initiatives. Regular health monitoring and functional review by a high quality provider and skilled medical care team are services for achieving maximum longevity and quality of life after a spinal cord injury. Thank you for watching. If you made it to this point with me, don't forget to comment down below and let me know if you or someone you know has a spinal cord injury and any topics you want me to touch on in the future videos that I make. Like this video if this was helpful or insightful or interesting to you. And if you want me to continue to make videos like this, smash that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. We're almost at 1.5K subscribers. I love you, stay blessed, and I'll see you in the next video.